Hello there. If you recall back when we were in school, we had to read a lot of books that the teacher pretty much picked out for us. And let's be honest here, most of them weren't particularly good, thought-provoking, or interesting. Oh, there were a couple of solid ones. I was genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed The Great Gatsby. Not to mention I also had to read Alice in Wonderland at one point. However, I could care less about the rest. Timothy Finley's The War is just puts me to sleep every time I think about it. And don't even get me started on Catching the Rye. So today, I'm going to give a comprehensive list of the books I think should be taught in school that are both intellectually interesting as well as entertaining. Because nothing's worse than killing a student's appreciation for reading. So let's start with an obvious pick. Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange. There is a bit of a bias here since this is my favorite book, but frankly, there's so much to explore here. The use of language, the commentary on free will, the multi-layered main character, and the way it unravels is just part of what makes it so fascinating. It's a disturbing book with its fair share of violent imagery, but nothing a teenager cannot handle. The lasting impact of it can also lead to an interesting discussion on its influence on the youth from when it was written. Simply put, it's a page-turner. I actually read A Clockwork Orange by my own choice in my first year of secondary school, and frankly, it's the only book from that year that had actually stuck with me or that I actually remember. Also a fascinating book is Truman Capote's In Cold Blood. Based on the true story of the murder of a Kansas family by Richard Hickok and Perry Smith, Capote fashioned a different form of writing style when making this masterwork non-fiction literature. Rather than having it read like a step-by-step -step account of the story to the point of sounding like a newspaper article, he actually wrote it as if it was a regular fiction book. The way he writes about their run from the law and Smith's pensive thoughts are beyond fascinating and allows it to not be dull in the least. It says a lot that even though this is not usually the sort of book I read, I was enraptured throughout all of its pages. Moving away from murder and bloodshed, the reason I started with those books were because what we had to read were pretty dreary stories. But those are at least entertaining books about the effect of violence on youth. Frankly, since school isn't supposed to be funny, reading a comedic book was frankly out of the question. However, to lighten the students' lives up a bit, here are some humorous books worth reading. First off, Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a wonderfully funny and satiric take on the life, the universe, and everything. Surrounding the destruction of Earth, one of the only survivors is a Brit named Arthur Dent who is accompanied by his alien friend, the towel-wearing Ford Prefect. In addition to featuring that great British sense of humor, the book also serves as a terrific satire with a sense of originality. If you want to keep your students motivated and in a good mood to complete their assignments, this is the book to do it with. The fate of the universe is in their hands. Uh, sorry, what exactly are we doing? This! Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't leave Earth without it. For another great British book, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice is also worth teaching. Now, you might be thinking an old Victorian story about a girl who falls for a boy she initially doesn't like, like that would be interesting, and shockingly, it is. Mainly thanks to the strong writing by Austen. Elizabeth Bennet is one of the most well-written female characters in classic literature, as Austen makes her a smart and fascinating character who we actually want to follow through the course of the story. It may be a romance, but there's a surprising amount of appeal to boys. However, if you want to appeal to everyone in your classroom, Elmer Leonard's Get Shorty is also a terrific read. A gangster story with a twist, the book involves a loan shark who soon finds himself enamored with the film business and decides to become a producer. Leonard's writing not only proves to be a page-turner, but the book is brilliantly satirical on his take on the Hollywood lifestyle. However, there's a universal appeal to the writing, as even those who are not familiar with the little nods to the backstage workings of the film industry will find plenty to like here. Chili Palmer is an excellent protagonist who displays a certain amount of calculating intelligence that aids the story in becoming more than just a simple romp. And if it leads to checking out Leonard's other work, that's also a plus. Now, if you want to look at some non-fiction books worth exploring other than In Cold Blood, David Price's The Pixar Touch goes in-depth on the history of the most successful animation studio at the moment. 
Rather than simply painting a rosy picture, the book goes down into the troubles and tribulations that it took to turn Pixar into the famed film palace you see today. In a way, this could even be considered the social network of animation stories, as not only does it praise the accomplishments of Steve Jobs, Ed Catmull, and other notable people, it also looks into the problems they occurred when bringing the studio to life. Not only will it lead to a new appreciation for Pixar, but also a different understanding of how the film industry works. And now, I'm going to cap off with a form of literature that has become more respected in the past number of years, though it's still not yet being taught in school, which is a shame. I'm of course talking about the graphic novel, and these two are especially worth looking into. Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns brought a new level of respect to Batman not quite seen since the days of Bob Kane, and his gritty story will lead to plenty of discussion on the nature of the hero and how a superhero reflects society as a whole. While graphic novels are certainly known for bringing the likes of the Watchmen to us, they also look at everyday ordinary people too. While Daniel Clode's Ghost World does not exactly involve ordinary people, it does feature a terrific lead character who is both cynical, witty, and oddly likable. If you want to inspire plenty of discussion with your students about teenagerhood and their views on the world, this is definitely worth handing out come September. To conclude, I think these books would definitely be an interesting change from the usual books typically being taught in schools around the world, and while mileage will certainly vary, I think plenty of students will find things to like in them. Or, better yet, let the students pick out the books they want to read, though obviously with guidelines, otherwise everyone's just going to read Twilight. Because that's what teenagers are reading these days, right? I've never read them. In fact, if you want, email your English teacher this video, and maybe you might be saving another poor student from having to read Catch in the Rye in the next school year. See you next time.